All that was was shaitan. That whole propaganda that people are coming, they're gathering against you, they're going to come and get you, things are going to get a lot worse for you. All that was was shaitan, Allah says. All he does is instill the fear of his friends into you. He wants you to be scared of his friends. That's one interpretation of the text, but equally applicable is another interpretation of the same text grammatically, which is all that was is shaitan, who only the people who are his friends get scared. So if you get scared, Quran is commenting, you become friends with who? Shaitan. He's only successful in scaring his friends. So there's two things. He wants you to be scared of his friends. And if you do get scared, you just became friends with him. You just joined his party. Then don't be afraid of them. Be afraid of me if you in fact believe. Every time you and I stand in front of Allah, it's not just because we worship Allah. It's not just because we only believe in one God. That is also an acknowledgement that we fear no one but Allah. That we bow before no one but Allah. That we humble ourselves before no one but Allah. When every salah is a reminder that there is nothing else, no political circumstance, no rhetoric, no media, there is no bias against this, no crimes that are taking place that will instill the fear of anyone other than Allah in our hearts. That is an acknowledgement every time you and I stand in prayer. فَلَا تَخَافُوهُمْ وَخَافُونِي إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ وَلَا يَحْزُنْكَ الَّذِينَ يُسَارِعُونَ فِي الْكُفْرِ Allah is not done. He says, don't, don't let those who are making a lot of efforts to the, for the, furthering the cause of disbelief, those who are making so many efforts to destroy Islam, those who are making so many efforts to make to turn believers into disbelievers, those who are making so many efforts to further kufr on the earth, disbelief and disregard of God on the earth. They make a lot of efforts. They have a lot of money. They have a lot of resources. They have a lot of tools. Don't let all of their efforts ever worry you. This is a principle of the Quran. We have forgotten this principle. Ustad Nurman, have you seen what they're doing on this website? Do you know this video that they made? Do you know what they said on CNN? Do you know what they said on Fox? Why don't you just recite لا يحزنك الذين يسارعون في الكفر Don't let their efforts and their schemes and their propaganda ever worry you. إنهم لن يضر الله شيء I love this part. إنهم لن يضر الله شيء They no doubt about it can't harm Allah at all. <laughs> I'm baffled by this statement. Allah said don't worry about their schemes and their plans and their plots and their propaganda. They can't harm who at all? They can't harm Allah at all. I'm not worried about them harming Allah. I was actually kind of worried about them harming me. So I was expecting Allah will say, don't worry about their schemes, they won't harm you. But Allah says, what instead? Don't worry about their schemes, they can't harm Allah. Why is that? Because Allah is our protection. It's like Allah is our shield and they can't do anything about this shield. So you're safe because you're with Allah. You're with Allah. They can't harm Allah. So you have nothing to worry about. Then why is Allah giving them this opportunity to scheme and plot and further their cause and make things more and more difficult for the believers? Allah wants that they, they get nothing, not even a little bit of the Akhirah. Meaning there are people that are evil and they want to continue to do more evil and undermine and, and continue the path of injustice and oppression. Allah says, I'd like to let you dig your hole a little deeper because that little good you have left in you, you don't, you don't even deserve it. Let you do your evil. Why are people so evil? Because Allah's punishment to them is He let them, let them have it. You want to go this way? Go ahead. Go ahead. They have great punishment standing before them. Instead of being afraid of them, the Quran makes us feel sorry for them. They're digging their own hole. Now listen to this part. Then He turns our, His attention to, within our own ranks. There are those who sold their, their belief with disbelief. 
There are those who under the pressure of the enemy said this Islam thing is too much. I can't handle it. I can't handle, you know, the way people look at me, the way people think about me. I'd rather sell this off and be like everybody else who's disbelieved so I'll fit in better. Allah says about them, لَن يَضُرُّ اللَّهَ شَيْئًا What do you think? They're gonna harm Allah? They can't harm Allah at all. وَلَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ And they have painful punishment coming before them. This is about those who sell their deen. May Allah not make us of them. وَلَا يَحْسَبَنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا إِنَّمَا نُمْلِي لَهُمْ خَيْرٌ لِأَنفُسِهِمْ Don't allow the disbelievers, the enemies of Allah's deen. Don't allow the vicious enemies of the Prophet ﷺ to ever think. Don't you dare think about them, that the stuff that they do is good for them. The extension Allah has given them is good for them. I'd like to give you an analogy here so it'll help you understand what's happening in this ayah. You have a, a rabid dog, uh, you know, a crazy dog who goes and bites whatever. And then you, somebody says, why don't you just put it on a leash? And what Allah does is He puts this dog on like you could say a thousand foot leash. It's a really long leash. The thing is, for 999 feet, this dog thinks that it's running free. Doesn't it? If you put it on a one foot leash, it just, it can't move. But if you put it on a thousand foot leash, it's gonna run around and never feel like a choke. But Allah says, I only extend for them, release them, give them more room. You wanna, you wanna do evil stuff? You wanna do kufr stuff? Go ahead, do more. Try to hurt the cause of Islam more. Propagate lies against Allah's Prophet more. Say vicious things about the Quran more. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Because that same dog, when it's running full speed and it hits foot 1000, what happens to him? He gets choked, doesn't he? And that choke is way harder when he's running full speed than it would have been if it was one foot long. That's the plan Allah has for them. Let them dig their hole. Let them choke themselves. We only give them extension so they can earn more sins. Allah says, and they will have humiliating punishment. Why did Allah say they have humiliating punishment? Allah usually says great punishment, painful punishment, but this time He says humiliating punishment. Why? Because when they try to humiliate the deen of Allah, then the only re a fair punishment is that they shall face humiliating punishment. Then Allah turns His attention to you and me and says, مَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيَذَرَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ عَلَى مَا أَنْتُمْ عَلَيْهِ Allah is not one to leave you alone in the state that you're in. Allah will not just leave you be and let you just think that you have faith. Until he can separate the good ones among you from the filthy ones. Some of you have filth inside of your hearts. And when the state of fear comes and the pressure comes and the stereotyping comes, some of you will abandon your faith and that filth in your hearts will not will take over whatever good you had in it. Allah says He will put you and I through terrible, difficult circumstances so He can separate the filthy from within the ummah. And cut, and cut them out. May Allah not make us, any of us from them. And Allah will never be one to inform you of the unseen. People come to the shaykh, the imam, the scholar. They come, what do you think? When is all this fitna going to end? When are things going to get better? Allah says, Allah is not one to inform you of the unseen. I don't get to get, I'm not going to say three more years. Watch, everything's going to be better. No, 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 no. That's actually what I've heard in churches. I go to church to hang out sometimes just to see what they do. I've been. And I, I actually last Christmas, I just, I want to know how they do, they do da'wah. How did they get a hundred thousand people inside of a stadium and preach? So I went to listen, well, what do these guys do? And they're like, this year is going to be a great year for you. The Lord's going to take care of everything. You're going to get yourself a promotion. And that divorce is finally going to be filed. And you're going to do great this year. Because the Lord promises it. I was like, what Lord promises this year is going to be great? You know, we don't have that in Islam. Like, is this year going to be better than next? When is Allah going to finish this fitna? Or when are things going to get better? Allah told us very clearly, so we're not deluded. And we don't even ask that question. Allah will never be one to tell you what's going to happen in the unseen. And the future of the Ummah is in the unseen. However, Allah does select from His messengers whoever He wants. Meaning Allah chose His messenger and decided to tell him what you need to know. Focus on what Allah told you and not what Allah did not tell you. Don't get, don't get obsessed with things that Allah Himself didn't give you. If it was valuable for you, Allah would have given it to you. 
So don't be so, so obsessive, compulsive about unnecessary details. فَآمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرُسُلِهِ وَإِن تُؤْمِنُوا وَتَتَّقُوا فَلَكُمْ أَجْرٌ عَظِيمٌ then, then just believe in Allah and His Messenger. And if you can continue to believe and continue to be fearful only of Allah, then you will have great punishment, what, well, great reward rather. What else do you want? Just have faith and be fearful of Allah. In the most toughest of times, Allah is telling you that's the only two things you're going to need. Everything else will work itself out. Don't focus on the problem. And finally, the advice to you and to me. This is the last thing I'm sharing with you, I promise. And don't you ever think about those who are cheap, greedy, miserly with what Allah has given them. That they hold on to what Allah has given them. Min fadli, from his own favor. They didn't earn it. That's a favor of Allah on them. Huwa khayran lahum. That that's good for them to hold on to their wealth. This is the time. This is the time where the young people, were gonna, they're going to have to give up their free time that Allah gave them. Their free time cannot go into eight hours of video games anymore. There's no time for you to watch the next Netflix and Amazon series. You don't have that kind of time. You're the Muslim youth. Allah has given you free time. Allah has given you talent. Allah has given you creativity. That creativity cannot go into you making stupid jokes on social media. It needs to be used in much more productive ways because these people who Allah has given wealth and luxury and opportunity and health and talent, when Allah has given all of these things and they're cheap and miserly with it, they only use it for themselves. What does Allah say about them? That they think they get to use it for themselves is good for them? It's bad for them. The very things they were cheap with, the very things they were greedy with for their own, are the very things that will be turned into a rope around their necks, choking them on the day of resurrection. That time, that ni'mah, that rizq that Allah gave you, that you didn't put to the right cause, is going to come and choke you on the day of resurrection. May Allah not make us of them. Man, what a thing to say. Allah alone owns the entire inheritance of the skies and the earth. What in the world is inheritance doing here? Allah is tell, reminding you and me, whatever you own, whatever I own, whatever I enjoy in this life, I'm not going to get to keep it. At the end of the day, I'm going to be in the ground and somebody else will be driving my car. I'm going to be in the ground and somebody else will be wearing my clothes. And by the way, they won't be driving it for that long either. They're going to be in the ground too. Somebody else will be living in that house a hundred years from now. Somebody else is going to be, you know, you know, eating the fruit of that tree that I have in my backyard. It's not going to be mine. And at the end of it all, all of it will be given in inheritance back to Allah. It's Allah's. Because everybody will be gone. Understand the temporal nature of the material world. Do not become materialistic in your goals, in your aspirations. Things Allah Azza wa Jalla is offering us in a time of great fitna. The only thing to worry about is what you will earn with Allah. Put your efforts in this world. Excel. Do your very best. But then again, if that's all you want to do for this life, then that is what, he, what is exactly choking you. It's going to choke you. It's going to destroy you. Our deen is so beautiful. Such a balance between what we, what we want in the next life and what we get in this life. It, it, it merges the two of them. We're not just people of Akhirah and we're not just people of Dunya. We're people of Rabbana Atina fi Dunya Hasana wa fil Akhirati Hasana. And so Allah Azza wa Jalla concludes, as I conclude in this passage, Wallahu bima ta'amaloon khabir. And Allah has full news and full account and a full perspective on everything that you're doing. And that's a comment to the Ummah. I know what you're doing. I know what you're doing when you've been hit with injury. I know whether or not you are becoming people of Jannah. I, I sincerely, I, I remind myself and I remind all of you that this Quran is a living document. It's a living, living book. It, it will inspire, it will empower, sometimes it will scare, sometimes it will set you straight and calibrate you. It is not a drug like you know, in modern philosophy, religion is the opiate of the masses. So you feel, you, you, you turn to religion to feel better about yourself. Yes, the book of Allah will make you feel better about yourself. But sometimes you just need to get a slap in the face and get set, set out straight. And the book of Allah will give you that too. It'll give you what you need because Allah is your Rabb. He's your master. He doesn't have to cater his message to what might make you feel better. He'll cater the message to what you need, what your heart needs. And this time Allah is basically telling the ummah in the middle of this crisis, grow a spine, get strong, 
Don't be afraid of anybody else. Prove yourself to Allah and none of the efforts you do will go unacknowledged.